just enjoy the background music for a minute. So I open up my bubbly water. Someone once said, bubble, 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 the devil is in trouble. <laughs> Spring up a while. <laughs> Come and wash all the serpent in his sawdust away. You know, it was dust of the earth that the serpent fed on. <laughs> we know snakes don't eat dust. That's the fallen flesh nature of man. Because man fell and, and he was made from the dust of the earth. So he fell into, back into the dust. <laughs> he was supposed to reign in the heavens with living water. But Jesus Christ came so that we can come. He came down to bring us up. <laughs> Remember Moses in the burning bush? <laughs> I can't even talk right now. The, guy, the angel in the burning bush, the spirit in the burning bush said, I came down to bring you up. Hallelujah, man. Jesus Christ came down to bring us up to sit with him in heavenly places far above all principalities, powers, and demons, and all that other stuff. And all the dust. You know, living water pouring out of your innermost being will push away all the dustiness around you. I guarantee it. Just go grab a bucket of water and pour it on. If you have a bunch of dust, like on your car or something, just go pour it up and see what happens. Signs and wonders. <laughs> so it makes you wonder why you just didn't do that sooner. Let's get into the living water, the washing water of his word, and get intoxicated in the Holy Ghost. It becomes revelatory and not just like a parrot repeating scriptures. We could be like living epistles, alive in the spirit and truth. Wow, I was thirsty. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> oh. Amen. Oh. It's not about being all pr prom and primer. <laughs> Proper and primed and <sighs> Proper. You know, the only thing that matters in this life is giving it to Jesus. <laughs> wow. What is life more abundantly? It's having the life of Jesus Christ abundantly gushing through your mind, through your heart, and through your body. Man, I woke up in the middle. I was so stressed out. I, man, I go through stuff, you guys. <laughs> I've been going through stuff. I got that stupid CO, you know... VI video thing. <laughs> I got that the, about like a month ago. Couldn't see my daughter for like a month. And then, then all the buses are on strike. I can't get her to school. And then my car gets, it, 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 it snowed and I got, I got rubber tires. The tires are peeling. I can't do anything. Trapped in the house. Feeling sick. <laughs> Tired. Uh, burnt out. And the only, the only thing that works, I'm telling you guys, the only thing that works is just loving Jesus. I mean, worshiping him in spirit and truth until you, until you get to the point where your heart is just exploding. Like when you can sing like holy, holy, holy and mean it. It's like you're like right there in the throne room. You're like, you're saying with the 24 elders, angels, cherubim, seraphim, flowers, grass, you know, the clouds, everything is just singing holy to God in spirit and in truth. And you mean it. You're not having choir practice. That's the only thing that works. Everything else is just like, just a bunch of phantoms, illusions, and shadows. You know, there's this three chord strand that I use that is not easily broken. <laughs> it's this. It's like worship God in spirit and in truth. Then the spirit of truth comes and reveals mysteries to you. And then get into the logos. Read the word of God. And if you can't read, <laughs> put on an audio Bible. You can watch them on YouTube. If you're watching me, right? You should be watching an audio Bible more than someone talking about it. See, I'm just the manna. But the word of God is the meat of the gospel. It's easy to listen to other people talk about God. So <laughs> other people talk about the Bible. <laughs> You know, but there's something about just when you open up the scriptures for yourself, it's just you and the Holy Ghost. And then like, Holy Spirit, if you don't reveal anything to me, like I am just like, <laughs> I feel like I'm wasting my time and yours because you put me on this planet to show forth the kingdom. So please show me the kingdom. Seek ye first, first the kingdom of heaven. And then all these other things will be added to you. So God, I need fresh revelation. God, I need 
fresh intoxication of your spirit in my heart and mind and body. God, I need you. Take my mind, take my mouth, take my body. Just do whatever you want, God. Worship the word. And then just, just back and forth and prayer. Just calling out to God while you're worshiping. Calling out to God while you're reading the word of God. And just praying without ceasing in whatever season, or whatever you're doing. I don't feel like praying. Well, that's all the more reason you should be. Until it's just like a river coming through you, like of continuousness. Because there's things in the atmosphere that want to stop you from breaking through. Because your breakthrough breaks other people through as well. It's the law of Luke. Uh, well, uh, chapter 4, I think it is. Or Mark, I don't know, one or somewhere in the New Testament. It says, and then Jesus was in the boat with the disciples and there's other little ships on the water as well. And it started getting ruffled by the storm. Why is it mentioned the other little ships? Because the disciples got a breakthrough with Jesus in their boat. The storm was there. And then, and then they're like, Jesus, help. You ever pray that? I pray a lot. Jesus help! He's like, oh, you a little faith. Then he comes. He gets. He gives them their breakthrough. They thought they were gonna die. And Jesus is in the boat. Holy Spirit, shut up. It all becomes calm. And what happened? Those other little ships received a calm too, didn't they? Why? Because the disciples got their breakthrough, and they just happened to be in the vicinity of the disciples who got their breakthrough of peace and calm. So when you get a breakthrough of peace and calm, those other little ships, your children, your family members, your neighbors, those who come around you, ha, anywhere where you're attached to people in the, in the soul realm, your soul magnify the Lord and the Lord will come through your soul magnified and just spill onto them. What do they receive? A peace and a calm. How much more do we need peace and calm in our day? <laughs> Everything's getting all stirred and riled up. Well, you know what? Bubble, bubble, bubble. The devil is in trouble. <laughs> Someone once said that. What does that mean? Spring up, oh well. Let those living waters come forth through the body of Christ. If you knew Jesus Christ and the gift of God, you would have just asked of him and he would have given you living water, which is he spoke of the Holy Spirit, which will push back all the dust. Oh, I used to have this thing where I would try to stop sinning. I'm not going to sin. And then I end up sinning. <laughs> I found the key, though, where I could go long seasons without sinning. And it wasn't trying not to sin. It's like, it's just tr pressing into him. I want Jesus. I want the Holy Ghost just burning through me. I want my heavenly father just consuming me as a living sacrifice and you're just getting blasted in the glory. And it's like you totally forget about what even sin was, what it's the desires of it. It's like just like the, the thing will try to come in your mind like, ew, and it just falls off. Why? Because you're wearing the armor of God. It's of God. How about you're wearing the armor and he's God. You're wearing God. Put on Christ. Mm, what is the armor of God? It's Christ in you, shining through you, that light of his glory. The realm of his kabah, the realm of his shekinah, the realm of his, his anointing. It's the realm of the kingdom of heaven. You're so one with the king that his kingdom splashes through you. And just, just, it just rips to shreds the kingdom of darkness around you. Like this is how, this is how, this is how it works. Like, let there be light, and then, you know, the poof, the light comes on, and the darkness fle flees. And it's not like there's a huge battle. And I realized, like, when I was just after God and just feeding on the Word of God, feeding on, just feeding on, in, in God in worship and spirit and in truth, listening to sermons who people would have glory on them and just praying, like, oh, I just think random things like that. Uh, if you're not playing Candy Crush in spirit and in truth, you should you know, get hit by the glory. You know, it's like you just you're just joking around and you get hit. Just I woke up one time in the middle of the night, I couldn't sleep, so I just like you know I'm just gonna sit here in front of the camera and just goof off. And I just press record. 
And then as soon as I pressed record, I just got hit by the glory. So like, what is going on? I was just goofing around. I was gonna make a serious video, like the, the five steps to walking in Shekinah, you know? <laughs> There's not five steps, it's one. Oh, I love you. <laughs> Surrender. I said, God, what's the secret of Enoch? How can he walk with you like this? I want this. And he said it was just surrender. Relax. Just surrender your mind. Surrender your thoughts. Surrender your opinions. Surrender everything. And embrace. <laughs> embrace the mind of Christ. Embrace the heart of the Father that burns away the wood, the hay, and the stubble. And embrace his way. Yahweh. And you'll find Yahweh just... It's like he's the shield of faith around you. <clears throat> faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, which is not just the Bible in your earballs. Earballs, huh? <laughs> your ear sockets, you know? A lot of people listen to audio Bibles and they don't get faith. They get, they get Pharisee impartations, you know? It's like they're not listening so that to, to be changed from glory to glory. They're listening so they can get an argument and go on, go on the internet and d debate someone. That's not God's will, man. To be the light of the world is to shine the Holy Spirit through us. He is the light. And so, I totally lost count. Holy Spirit, I just want to thank you for everything that you've done in these people. <laughs> I just want to thank you for everything that you're doing in us, God. Until we come into the fullness of the maturity of, the, of Jesus Christ in us. Being able to yield 24-7, being able to see 24-7, being able to feel 24-7 the love of God that passes all understanding of the brain. It's the love of God that just carries us like a wave, like just surfing the waves of His love going from glory to glory in the kingdom of heaven. That's all that matters. The most important thing that we can do in this life is give it all to Jesus. Give our life to Jesus. The greatest of all is the servant of all. And Jesus demonstrated that by serving even the Pharisees who murdered him. He had like this. It's like, whoever wants to come, just come and embrace me. He's, like, he's nailed to a cross, bleeding to death in the shape of a hug. Like, just come. Come and embrace the king of glory. Ah, and it's like, you see his body like this, but his heart just wraps around you. And Genesis, you know, six of the number of man. In Genesis chapter six, we saw that man broke God's heart. It's like we grieved him at his heart for all the wickedness and all the, the darkness and all the thoughts of our mind and heart was continually wicked. It grieved him at his heart. And then we saw God's heart. God gave us his heart. His name is Jesus. He came full of grace and truth. We saw the heart of God. He was, he, he had the oil of joy on him. He was, he was so full of life. He was so full of joy, love, peace. That's God's heart. You look at Jesus, it's not just, I mean, that's his heart. For God so loved the world, he gave his love. And what was that love? It was Jesus. Jesus is the physical representation of God's heart. And when we saw God's heart, we took the whip. We ripped him to shreds. We spit on him. We ripped out his beard. That's what we did to God's heart in Genesis chapter 6. But he still held it there. God still held his heart there, even knowing that we would rip it to shreds. Why? Because love doesn't seek itself. He wants the others to be built up. I came down to bring you up into a heavenly place so that you can feast and leave disgrace behind. Remember the angel in the burning bush? He, I came down to bring you up. Up into what? Heavenly places in Christ. He came down to the lowest depths of hell to carry us up into the highest realms of glory where the heaven of heavens cannot even contain him. 
What does that mean? That means he's beyond the heavens, the heaven of heavens. He's past that. He's in realms that are not even created yet. <laughs> if there's a multiverse, he's in every one of those realms. What about a multi heaven? <laughs> the heaven of heavens cannot contain him. You know, heaven is is a realm is is dimensional. So remember, John was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and then he turned behind him and he saw Jesus in the book of Revelation, chapter one. Then he heard a voice saying, "Come up here." He gets translated, goes through a door. Then he's on the mountain. Then he's before the throne and the angels and the cherubim and the seraphim. And he's just zipping around heaven interdimensional jumping and people who have gone have said like you, you you travel through the speed of desire you can see someone way off in the distance and just through desire poof, you're right there or you can just take your time and walk and enjoy the enjoy the peace <laughs> enjoy the love enjoy the flowers and the grass praising God the most beautiful thing in heaven is God the second most beautiful thing in heaven is the worship the songs. Uh, there's this one guy. He died. Uh, I think his name is Gary Oates. No, not Gary Oates. Gary Wood or something. Gary Wood? I don't know. I can't remember his name. But anyways, when he died a long time ago, and you heard this song, it was going. Here I am to worship. And then he saw a decade later, Matt Redman, the worship leader, brings out the song. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. This guy, Gary, if that's his name, saw it a decade before who was ever released in heaven, from heaven. I mean, released in the earth. There are songs that need to be sung. For those who are in tune with God, they will hear those songs. There are sermons that need to be spoken. For those who are in tune with the word of God will speak them. There are realms that need to be opened. Those who speak the words of God will open up the realms of God. And that's a fact, Jack. <laughs> because when Peter spoke, it's like the heavens open and they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's like I sometimes like I went to this this my friend's place and I washed his feet and when I did like it was God was humbling me because I had something in my heart towards this guy because he was really irritating sometimes sometimes I loved him as a brother but man he hurts get under my skin if I was stronger I'd rough him up <laughs> I tried a couple times and uh, so God uh, sent me there to go wash his feet through a vision and I obeyed and then I washed his feet and then after I did that all these people came in the house there's like 10 of us or so it's like anything we would say would just the heavens were open it's like you could talk about chocolate bars and then wow the sweetness of God oh I can just taste and see that the Lord is good when you taste the Lord visions come when you taste you can see that he's good and then you know the reality of God you can talk about anything you can talk about a carpet you know, anything. And it would have revelation. It was just so easy because the glory was there. And it, it came through obedience to the word of God. And when you obey the word of God, realms show up. But first of all, it's not just coming to like you grab a scripture. Okay, I'm going to obey this today. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go uh, put my shadow on people and see if they get healed. No. <laughs> doesn't work like that. Maybe, maybe it might work for you. I don't know. But I, I've tried. Like I drive people out of wheelchairs. I told people to go take your wheelchair to the pawn shop. We were getting out today and nothing happened. And I had to put them back in the wheelchair. That was embarrassing. Because Jesus said, I only do what I see my father doing. And I was like, just, I was a brand new believer. I didn't know anything. But I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of demons manifest on me. They're threatening to throw me on a totem pole. <laughs> I'm like, I already crucified with Christ. And, I just, and the guy snaps out of it. The demon just leaves the guy. And then he, he's like, what, what am I doing talking to this guy? <laughs> the, king, like the, the reality of the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light is just so apparent. <laughs> he's a new believer. Because my mom prayed for me to have wisdom. Because I needed it. I didn't have a lick of wisdom. 
So she prayed for me to have wisdom because I was going, I was shutting down, uh, what do you call those things? Those, uh, the psychic houses and stuff like that. I would, I would attack everything. <laughs> I shut this down and Jesus, I'm on the bus, you know, trying to shut everything down. And it did get shut down, but the demon jumped on me. I had to go get some prayer and deliverance. <laughs> when the buckets come out, you know it's getting real. <laughs> Amen. Okay, that's enough for my video today. Amen. <laughs>